okay um, good morning welcome to another web design and graphics design class um, I'm Mr. Oladokun and um, today we have um, quite a lot to do um, let me just give us a preview of what we'll be doing today we'll be developing one web page and this is what we'll be doing uh, gallery is the title here of the web page there is an icon here uh, like the logo of for this particular page uh, just call it tech page and a couple of links are here like if we can if you hover right above the links you see the background color changes a bit and for the last the first link see there's a drop down menu you know, drop down menu then if I go to link 7 there should be another menu like a um, kind of a drop down menu but appears in front of it and there's kind of like a, a little animation feature there see it's kind of you know the it transitions in in uh, with a bit of an animation effect same thing too with the link one uh, so we'll be doing a bit of animation today and um, this is in uh, the top of the page navigation top and we have a text here gallery and then um, there are some cards here. This is card one, card two, card three, card four. You know. And um, this card, if I hover my mouse right above the card, you will see it's kind of enlarges a bit. I take it away, it goes back, enlarges a bit, enlarges a bit, and you know. Uh, so it's, it's a little animation effect, kind of. You know. So you'll be, it's part of what we'll be doing today. And then um, another. I want us to realize is you know, based on this orientation of the screen if I expand the screen we have to we have uh, four cards here one two three up to card four all the four cards are on a single column now if I expand this page a bit at some point it's going to switch to two columns so it's responsive it's a responsive web design so we have two cards you know um, being aligned side by side, laid side by side. If I go down a bit, you have card three and card four side by side, you know. And regardless of how much I expand it, it will still remain two um, cards. At some point, they should it should there's enough space here to accommodate a third card side by side. But I did not, um, I didn't design this page to do that. So the whole point of doing this is that I'm participating or I'm providing uh, different layouts based on the size of um, the screen or the monitor that's viewing this web page so if you are viewing this web page on a desktop wide screen in landscape you know I want cards two cards to be aligned side by side to be placed side by side you know in a row and I anticipate that if the web page is viewed on a mobile device in portrait mode where where the um, screen is relatively narrow it should change to one just uh, one uh, card per column or uh, one card per row so even if I take it down 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 make it as narrow as possible it still remains one card so that's responsive design that is developing your, developing your web page to respond to the screen size you know whether it's a mobile device narrow screen or a desktop wide screen so that's two different designs two dif two designs in the same web page so i'll be teaching us that so like i stated of course we should be familiar with um this navigation top uh design approach we have um, the, the logo the link drop down menu and then at the very end um i did a bit of animation now if you scroll down here something is happening here right at the bottom see there's a the cartoon figure running across our screen that is 2d animation you know let me expand the screen we can see here that the character running all the way here running 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 you know so i uh, will also be teaching us how i came up with this how you know i was able to um introduce animations this uh, 2d animation into our web page so by the end of uh, today's video we'll be able to re recreate this you know. so um, let's let's dive into it. So I'll close this and we'll start afresh. Okay. Um, uh, if you are working on PC, I assume that you already have 
Visual Studio Code ID installed. That's what I have here on my left. This is Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code installed. So let's open up Visual Studio Code. And um, here we have the Explorer. I click on Explorer. Okay, these are my, my old files. Um, let me see if we can. Uh, okay, if you don't want to go through the Explorer, just click on File, Open Folder. So we are going to open the folder that will contain all the files that we need. So uh, last class or last assignment, uh, we were supposed to work on assignment six, the assignment six folder. And in that assignment six folder, um, we had the images folder contents and in this index index of HTML right here. So we are continuing uh, today's class based of uh, based on what we've done in assignment six. So we are in assignment six now. Assignment six is the name of the folder. So if I click on select folder, it will select assignment six for us. So it will take a, a while to load up. And um, yeah, so in our explorer here, this is the explorer. Let me open it and close. We can close this, get started. In the explorer window, explorer, we can see that we have um, our files. We have content. Our department is what we what we did last class. It's department. This is department to HTML. This is the last assignment. Then we have images. All our images. There are a lot of images here. Then um, index.html is the home page, and um, style.css is the style sheet. So for today's class, we will be going back to our content. So uh, let me let me open up the department dot so this is the code for department of html the assignment uh, if i right click on department of html and i say open with live server it would launch it in our uh, browser so it take a while to load now this is the assignments i gave last class and this if there's a link here that says gallery so if I click on this arrow, because gallery.html does not exist yet. So we want to create gallery.html, this file. So we're going to create so, such that whenever we click on gallery.html, it will take us to our new file. So let's go back to contents. We are in contents now. Department.html is this file that we open. Is this web page we open it. This web page is department.html. So right here, um, we are in department.html. On top here, this... We have new file button, we have new folder button. So let's create a new file. New file, and uh, we call it gallery, gallery.html. And so we have gallery.html open for us. So this is gallery.html. So what we are going to do today now, we are, we are going to fill up this gallery.html. We're going to develop uh, a new web page here. So we can close this department of HTML. I don't think we need it for now. Let's just so now we want to start working on gallery of HTML. And uh, if I'm working on VS uh, Code, there there is this uh, layout. It gives you automatic layout. You know, all web pages have some basic layout, uh, basic structure. So instead of you know cramming it, memorizing it, and regurgitating it every time, we want to start a web page. It's always a good thing to just you know, have VS Code do that for you, so you fill it in. So in VS Code, exclamation mark and um, tab, tab button, or you click on this element abbreviation. And so it has it kind of, you know, auto coding for us. Automatically, it's filled up the basic structure of almost all HTML pages. So um, in order for us to see this a lot clearly, let me let me zoom in a bit. Um, Control plus. Okay, so uh, I've zoomed in a bit. Let me close the explorer. Okay, so that is larger now. So we can it's larger. This department of HTML. We don't need it for now. I can close it. So we're in gallery of HTML. This is the basic structure of um, our web page. So we can go live. If you click on explorer again, gallery. Right click on gallery. Open with live server close the explorer so here our page should load and um, it's blank because 
this gallery was HTML. There's nothing here. This is just it's a blank page. We've not done anything, you know. We've not added anything to the body of the uh, web page. So let's change the titles from documents to because if you look at here, the title is documents. Let's change it to gallery. So if I control S, save, it will change. Now we have gallery here. So that is good. Okay. So um, before we continue, we of course everything we'll be doing here today we based off of HTML language and CSS CSS style sheets so we usually we've been doing our CSS um, inside the file but today of course we'll be doing the external CSS so if you go back to our Explorer there's already one CSS here one style sheet here and um, but I want to style um, today's class a lot a, a bit different from you know the what the styling we had before so I can, if I click on the style here uh, of course it, it opened the old one I'm still going to close it I want to open a new style sheet so new file create a new style sheet so STYL style maybe style 2 that's style sheet 2 dot CSS and click outside of it so this is the second style sheet so we can close our explorer this is the original style sheet. Let's close it. We don't need it. Style sheet two and gallery dot html. So those are the two things we need. So gallery dot html is the file we need, and style two is the second style sheet that will be. So we are going to link this style sheet to this gallery dot html file, such that you know we can when we edit our style two dot css, it affects the content of. Or the displayed what is displayed by our gallery and uh, dot HTML file. So um, let's just quickly do this. Let's link it now. Let's do the linking. So you can click on our title, shift it down a bit with enter button. So right on top, we are going to link it. So to link in, um, if you want to link a style sheet in HTML, of course you start with the angle bracket L I N K link, then um, rel rel is the relationship so what's the relationship between this particular gallery.html file and the style 2 css file the relationship rl equal to um let's use double quotes style sheets styl style sheet style sheet so the relationship between uh the html file and the css is that the css is the style sheet for you know this HTML file, the gallery.html file. So that is that about the yeah, attribute. So the next attribute is maybe the type. Uh, what type? The type of um, style sheet. There are so many types of style sheet, but this type is equal to um, is a text file. Sorry, text. The text file. Not only is it a text file, particularly it is a CSS file. So that's all about the type. Then. Um, we can also the most important thing actually is the reference href href hyperlink reference equal to so where is the actual we need to navigate to where the style sheet is from we are in gallery.html so between gallery.html and um, style2.css what's the relationship how can we go from gallery.html to style2.css so we click on we click on the file the explorer menu here we see that gallery.html is under content so if we can navigate backwards from gallery.html navigate backwards to the parents folder and the parent folder is assignment.6 uh, assignment 6 so navigate backwards after navigating backwards we didn't have style 2 so we want to go from here to here if you want to go from gallery from gallery.html to style2.css we need to go backwards from gallery.html, go backwards to the parent folder, then go down all the way to style2.css. So, now if you want to write that in form of hyperlink, like we have stated earlier, if you want to go backwards, you want to navigate backwards, you use dot dot forward. Immediately do that, you see that it has navigated backwards now. Now we now have options. See style2.css is now there because we've navigated backwards. So let's click on this. So, navigate backwards dot dot forward slash then you can now find style2.css so this is the hyperlink reference to our file so um 
the link tag is a single the link element is a single tag. I mean it has one single tag. It doesn't it has just an opening tag. It doesn't have open and close tags, so it's just a single tag. So you can close the tag here. Uh, for elements that have single tags, usually sometimes you just this is okay for it. Just you know, open uh, angle bracket here and close angle bracket here. Or sometimes you see some um, some developers they put false slash in front of it. False slash. See that method should work because normally the, uh, the, the elements that have two tags like this type two, the closing tag has the false slash. But elements like the link that has just a single um, tag, just all you have to do is put the opening angle bracket and the closing angle bracket. But some developer just had this false slash for just for I don't know for the sake of it. Uh, it works both ways. You see that the, the, the meta, the meta um, element has just a single tag too, as we have here for this top one. And yet at the end there's no false slash. So if you see some uh, web developers putting false slash at the end of their first their single tags, you know it's it's not a error. It's um I guess it's programming preference I guess, but it works in both uh, both ways. So save now we've saved it. So that means that whenever we edit our this style two dot CSS, it affects how our gallery.html is displayed. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's start with our the body of our uh, the body of our HTML page. Because the body is the whatever it is you put in the body is what will be displayed here. So let's let's create a div class you know, if you look at what we what we are going for the output i showed us earlier we had a enough uh enough bar a large enough bar kind of like a large bar here with a picture and a small enough bo top or in enough box inside uh a navigation area kind of so we can call that navigation area let's say um nav top i guess let's call it nav top so um diff let's create a diff class d i v diff so enter so right in between our opening and close diff tags uh we're going to have some other elements in it so let's give this a class name class the class name of um nav top the class name of nav top the so navigation top basically so inside our nav top, um, let's create another div class, div, uh, and that's one thing about Visual Studio Code. Instead of having to manually type uh, the div like this, div, and close it, you know, you can just type div alone, and it automatically still puts the angle bracket there for you automatically. So the second div here, we want it to be our. Let's give it a class name of um nav bar so the navigation bar is actually going to be embedded inside the nav top so nav bar and um so we have nav top and nav bar and okay so uh let's check let's go to our sa let's save this first control s save and let's go to our style sheet and see if we can do one or two things in our style sheet. So now we want to style our nav top. The not nav top, you know, we style with nav top. So let's style the nav top. Remember that if you are styling a, a class, use dot notation dot before the name of the, the tag, the name of the class rather. So the name of the class is nav top. You know, if this were to be an ID instead of dot, remember it to be hash hashtag. But we didn't use ID name, we use class. So since it's a class, we use dot instead. So dot nav top, angle brackets, enter. So let's give it the height of um a height of 150 pixels. Every line in CSS should be close with semi uh, with a semicolon, of course. And um, then uh, let's give it a background image. Background image background image of um, so we, we use URL URL uh, URL uh, double quotes so we want to go to where our images are where do we keep our images so if, if I click here 
on the explorer window this is where we are we are installed to the css i want to go to images images is in the same directory if you look at it images is in the same directory as the um, style to the css so that means we don't have to go back unlike when we were in gallery and wanted to go to style to so we don't have to go back because they are in the same folder all we have to do is just to reference images straight away from here and under images you have a lot of images here so we'll pick one of them and use it as our um, background image here so let's close the explorer so url images so we don't have to go back see automatically it shows us that images is nearby so images slash so there are, these are all the images i have under my images folder so let's try um wallpaper 7 wallpaper 7 and uh, it save control s you see that automatically the image has loaded up here so it's because of i specified a, a height of 150 that is why this height is, is restricted as it is if i change this to 250 and i save so that the image is you know larger it's, it unfolds a lot more so but because we don't want our navigation top to be too wide of course it's design choice you can make it you can make yours you know wider than this you can make it really sorry not wide you can increase the height you can make it taller and i guess if you can if you can say that with 550 for example you know it, it's the entire image height is exhausted and then yes, it's time to start again like it's duplicating the original image again you know so but let's let's just use 150 we don't want our navigation top to be too um long in terms of in height we don't want the height to be too much so that's 150 pixels that's the height and then um we specify something here there's the attribute here um let me go for the bit attribute here called the background size background um, size so that is the size of the background so there are a couple of things you can options you can use but it's let's use cover so what the background size cover why it does that it kind of fills up all available space so we actually control save see so that our image kind of shrunk a bit for example let me come back here if i use control forward slash control forward slash it converts this to a comment so if i save it see the image is larger here if i go back here again uncomment it save the image is kind of you know it shrunk a bit what that means is that it's kind of you know it covers up more space for example if i change this to 550 pixels and i save you see that the image is, does not repeat itself just a complete it can it, re, it recalibrates it restructures the image such that it fills up whatever space you give it if i uncomment the background size cover and i save you see that it's, it's, the image is duplicated here because the image has exhausted its original height and it's trying to start again from the beginning but if i enable background co size as cover and i save it would always just fill up the whole space so even if i use 650 save you know it still fills up the entire space it will resize the image just to make sure that there's no, there's no duplication so it's generally better to use background size cover so that you don't have the, the issue of um, having your image will be re replicating itself duplicating itself in a couple of places so but that is design choice in some cases it might be desirable for you to have it duplicate itself but we don't want that so let's use 150 save so we are back here and so that is the nav top so we have just styled this nav top this is nav top we have styled the nav top now and um i think that is pretty okay it's pretty okay for us to do that and um next now instead of instead of this our nav top inside the nav top we have a nav bar so there's going to be a bar here a navigation bar here inside this nav top apart from a nav bar uh we are still going to have uh we're going to put in a a uh, text a large text here called gallery but you know what let's just focus on the nav bar first let's design our nav bar after design our nav bar then we'll start thinking of we will to we will now uh, come to uh the text i want to have here so let's design the nav bar so so we start with our nav bar and uh we'll go to our CSS to design our nav bar. So, but before that, uh, we like to have in our nav bar, we like to have a logo here. So let's try and create our, our a custom logo. Of course, we can just get a, um, an image and import the image as our logo. But let's assume we don't have an image. 
and want to create our logo by ourselves like a, a very plain logo with text logo that has words in it you know no special graphics you know, let's just just create a, a very simple uh logo okay let's use h3 tag h angle bracket open h3 angle bracket close um let's let's say the name of our logo is tech page tech tech page t e c h tech page and i can say tech and then um, page tech page so if i control s save so i have tech page yeah tech page you know just pops up right here so uh, let's just say i i kind of you know i want to let's say i, I want to style this page differently now this tech page now is it's a single word so let's say that i want tech to be a different color and page to be a different color so that means that the styling for tech and page will be different so one way we can separate these two is to use a tag called the span tag we can use the span tag to kind of um segregate in, in text in, in inline text like uh i want to you know you have a text maybe like a paragraph and you want a segment of that you know text to appear different to um the other part of the text you can use span the span tag so angle bracket s p a n span close angle bracket so let's cut let's move our page inside the span and paste so we have tech then span page so let me control save let's see so we've updated it now but nothing nothing has changed so it still looks like tech page but just that now we can now we can style this span differently we can style this page differently you know compared to the tech because the page is embedded inside the span and whereas the tech is just in the default art uh, h3 uh tags so that's that about that and um so if we another thing is that this uh the the font type this is tech this tech page the font type this looks like um some kind of serif serif uh looks like a serif font font size font, font type times new romance you know it's okay kind of but uh, i don't but i don't really like um times new romance so i can change the, this font type i can change it inside the h1 h3 tag itself but i want the old page this old web page to have the same font style so um i can just come here i remember that the body of the page this body body the entire body the main structure of the all the html uh, elements we are going to view here they're going to be in the body so if we style the body it will affect everything inside the body including the div the nav top including the uh the nav bar it affects everything so you can just come here and type and style the select the body so because this body is a tag is a default element a tag of in, in html we don't have to put dots in front of it or there's no need to put dots because it's not a class there's no need to put hashtag because it's not an id so we just use body it's an element on its own so it should suffice so we can say now to edit the font type the attributes name for it is font family font family so if you look at there's so many options this korea new korea space you know for example if i select uh let me select this area so that it brought out it didn't just bring out one font it brought out three different font types what i mean is that this order of priority if the browser or if your 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 pc has the arial um font type it selects it uses arial if not if it doesn't have arial it will use helvetica if not it use sans serif so you are giving it three options so if i use ctrl s save see that the font type has changed and this is arial so but if i erase arial and say okay i don't want arial I want a vertical or sans, sans serif save let's see what will happen if it okay there's no it changes just there's a slight change because sans serif sorry aerial and a vertical they look pretty similar so the change is not too noticeable and uh, if i change from a vertical uh, erase this and i just use plain old sans serif uh, the change is also not too uh, obvious instead of if i had calibri this one is font type called um 
Calibri C A L I B R I Calibri and comma and save. Let's see. Okay, so see that it, it has changed now. So it's no longer using sans serif, it's now using Calibri. So you just erase the sans serif and you just Calibri alone. So Calibri. So Calibri is our uh, preferred font type for this particular um, web page. So we are now in uh, where are we? We are in a nav bar. So we are in the nav bar. So in the nav bar, we started by design, uh, having our logo, the H3. That's our logo there. And then after the nav bar, we we want we would like to put some links here. We have to we would like to put some links after our nav bar, and uh, it's going to be a div. Let's put another div, another box here. So this is our logo the h3 this h3 is right here so in right in front of this h3 i want to put a box here that will contain all our links so let's come here and create another div angle bracket open div angle bracket close enter and um, let's create class uh with a name Although we can also make it ID, you know, which, whichever one works. But let's just be using ID for, uh, quite a lot for our other pages. So let's let's use class. Let's use mostly classes today. Class equal to uh, let's call it nav links, navigation links, nav links. Okay, and save. Okay, so. We have the nav links, which is a div that is just in front of the h3 tag. So before we start styling our nav links, that is this div class, let's just let's deal with our logo first. So we have h3, and within the h3 we have the span. So let's go here. Let's select our h3 tag, h3. So we want our h3 to have a color of um white or you can use white smoke i guess or white plain white or ghost white or any other various kind of uh white you like so control s save so that the whole thing is now white so and um now this is it's actually a space here automatically whenever you create a header or rather h3 tag not just H3, H3, H1, H2, uh, H4, H5, H6, even paragraph um, tags or elements. Whenever you create them, by default, HTML tends to have some margin at the top, especially at the top, and maybe a bit at the bottom. So if you don't want that, you can just make the margin to be zero. Margin, I think, um, column, zero pixels, semicolon. Now if I save, you'll notice that this space here would, would collapse. So control S save, you know, ha. Huh. So that margin we had there is gone. So, but at the same time, you know, this uh, the logo is too close to the left. We probably want to move it a bit to the right. So you can put margin left, margin left as um, ten pixels. Control save. You see that our logo has shifted a bit to the right. And uh, let's see if we can adjust the font size. Font size as um, 16 pixels. Save. Okay, that's a bit smaller. Then uh, the span now, the whole thing is white. And we said the whole point of um, we putting this span right within the H3 tag is we want to style the, the word, this word page differently compared to the tech word so we can now style the span s p a n let's style the span and give it a different color instead of white or smoke white we give smoke white to the old h3 um ta uh, tag we want the color let's give a particular rgb color r um g b color um r is of course for red g is for green and b is for blue so zero reds. We don't want any red within this color. We want hundred um, 
values for uh, 100 integer value for green and blue we want blue to be predominant that's 200 so twice as much blue as there is green and zero red color so the overall color will be blueish kind of because it's predominantly blue so save we will see here that we have a particular shade of um of blue so tech page that's our tech page right there so yeah i think i think we are okay with that we are okay with that save so we have this is our logo kind of so we've designed our logo so to speak so the next thing is for us now to now work on the nav links the nav links should be in front of the front of this guy so let's work on the nav links okay so um i personally like to whenever i'm working with divs i like to see them because if you come here now if you come to your gallery you see that we have nav top nav top of course is this image is the nav top so we can we can visualize the nav top kind of now this nav bar is under div i we, i really cannot see the although it's there it exists but it's it might be, it's tricky for us to see like it's invisible so i can't really see my nav bar kind of and it's another div here and I remember div are boxes. Um, this div here, this box, is nav links. So our nav bar, we have no visualization for a nav bar, and our nav links, we have no visualization. So um, by it's, it's not by practice, in, in my own, I, 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 I kind of like to always be able to see whatever divs I create, whatever boxes I create, such that uh, I know where they are, I know their dimensions, I can edit them, and you know, instead of just working with something that you cannot see it's there but it's not visible so to make it visible at least temporarily you can you remove the visibility later it's always good to of course the best way to use it is to use um the background color so let's style our nav bar a bit and give it a background color such that we'll be able to see it so nav to nav bar is a class so right after our nav top let's we can style it here or you can start any way you style it it doesn't matter it will still work Okay, so um, the background noise we had from the power generator, uh, it's, it's off for now. So I guess you should hear me a bit uh, more clearly now. Okay, yes. So the nav bar, I want us, I want to see the nav bar. I like visualizing it. So let's dot nav uh, bar. The nav bar is the class, is the class name. So nav bar. Uh, so uh, let's give it a height so we can you know we can naturally see it a lot more clearly the height of um 35 pixels pixels 35 35 pixels safe so even with that we still cannot although we give it a height we we, st we still have troubles in it because it's invisible so we can give it a background color so we, we can visualize it so back ground background color so for now I can just give one random background color of course we change this one of whether it's ugly or not I just give it tomato as it, of course as it doesn't go with the theme general theme of the page but uh, tomato color so it's it's kind of ugly but uh, now you can now see this tomato this red reddish color is the nav top what are the nav bar sorry this the, this the old the image starting from this right here all the way around the old image here is the nav top here the nav bar is just this red reddish um, box here so we see that the logo tech page it's embedded inside the nav bar so now that we cannot see what our nav bar is you know it's uh, maybe i know it's, it's not like we are working with abstract things anymore you know, so whenever i'm working with boxes i like to just give them random colors you know, whether they are good colors or not just so that i can see what i'm, work, I'm working with so whenever i'm editing the uh, the, the boxes i can see the, the, the such changes how, how the box um the dimensions of the box and its prop other properties how you know they respond to the change in code okay so that is the nav bar and um uh before we continue with the nav bar we can even just um give our uh nav links for now i think uh, for now let's just give it so a background color kind of i think i, I might, might of course i might remove the the background color later nav links 
it's another box that's embedded inside the nav bar. So let's give it uh, some some color. There's a background color, background color of uh, hmm, something highly contrasting. So we can actually see it. Let's try. Let's use teal. Uh, save. Okay. Now we cannot see it. Why? Because we've not specified the height. So the height is probably zero. So it's you know we've, it's, it's almost invisible. Basically invisible, even though we you know we give it a background color. So let's give it the same height as as 35 pixels. The same height as um as 35 pixels as our nav bar. And that 35 pixels. Control save and okay so that's it so the nav links appears beneath beneath the it appears under the um the h the h3 tag now if you go back to our html we see here that we have nav top nav top is the image itself this image you have here this robot image then the nav bar the nav bar is this whole thing the reddish parts and the greenish parts is a nav bar so within the nav bar you have two elements h3 h3 element is the is this logo third page and we have a div that is the nav links so the h3 is on top and then underneath it you have the nav links so under you have under the logo we have the nav links so Basically, it's the same way we structured in the HTML. That's how it appears on the page here. So, uh, you know, it, it, if we are not giving these guys colors like the red and the green, you know, you will not have seen them. Although they actually would have, they existed, and they were this, they were already this way in the first place. Just that without giving any color, you know, it might be tricky to uh, to kind of know what is going on, kind of. But without giving a background color, you can develop the whole web page. And you know, if you are familiar with how uh, divs work, you, you don't need to give it background color to know how it behaves. So by just prepared to do this, you know, it makes things easier. It makes life easier. Okay, so uh, our links, we're going to put our links inside this greenish box here. It's the nav links. That's this guy here, nav links. We're going to put our so our links right here. So, but this is not. We don't really. I don't really like this layout. Although it's, it's not bad. But aesthetically, it's somehow, you know, such that if you, if you put the logo on top and you put the links underneath it, it's, uh, it's usually better, is um, of course, to put the links side by side the logo. So you have text page here, and you have the link somewhere in the middle, or maybe somewhere here, or somewhere left close to it, but at least on the same row, this same row. So we would like for this green box to be inside here, and the top, the green box should be side by side the tech page you know that's what we want it to be but um, HTML by default would not display that way and the reason is because the h3 element is a box element so box elements are elements that take up a whole space like if you create a box element it will take up its own space like it won't allow it won't want to allow you to put anything beside it so h3 is a box element it has zone box it takes the entire row here even if I expand this let me expand this to the so it doesn't matter how much space the tech page, the H3 covers, it doesn't care, it takes up this entire space, it doesn't care. Now the second box, the nav link also to take up its own space. So both this H3 guy and this the div box, the div and the H3 tags, they are both block elements. So they take up their own space, they are pretty stubborn that way. They don't want to share, you know, the same horizontal space with each other. So uh, H3 is on its own. The div class is on its own. So, but we don't want it to be that way. So, there's something we can do to put the H3 and the div class side by side each other, such that tech page and this nav link box, div box, will be side by side. They will share the same um, top space here, the same row, whether they like it or not. So, to do that, we will. It's we will need to do the the job. We will need to be done by the appearance. So both H3 and this div class, this div element with the class nav links, the two of them, they, are, they have a parent is, and the common parent is nav bar. So it's the parent that can, you know, instruct the children that you know what, you guys, I need to stay side by side, you know, sit on the same, sit in the same row, 
you know, you, you, you both cannot occupy one full or uh, your own. You have to share whether you like it or not. So the nav bar can, you can use the nav bar to force H3 and the div class, the div element with the class nav links, force the both of them to be occupy the same horizontal space. So that's what we are going to do now. So let's style our nav bar, the parent to H3, this H3 tag and this, this div tag. So let's go to nav bar. So nav bar, we already gave nav bar height and we gave it background color tomato. So we, w we want to do something else to our nav bar such that it will be possible for the the child elements or the children elements inside the nav bar to share the same horizontal space. So to do that, we, we use uh, a display format called grid. So D I S P L A display the display format. So display the display attribute um, kind of you know defines how do you want to it, it helps you define how you want to display you know elements that are inside a, a tag so we want to display them in form of a grid g r i d grid and semicolon sorry semicolon and save so although we've defined grid they are still stubbornly remaining on the same on their respective rows so we still need to make some more changes now the way grid works is that grid has rows and columns so we want to specify if you define this um, grid in a special way such that these two guys the logo and the uh, nav links box here they would have you know, they'll be able to stay on the same row so let's go back so after define our display as grid we give a template for how the, we want the grid to be displayed so grid uh, grid iPhone templates now you can give template for the columns of the grid or template for the rows we want to start with the columns so how many columns do you want? we want two columns so the first column we want the first column to be occupied by this logo tech page I want the second column to be occupied by uh, the nav links that this green box here so uh, that's two columns so we can specify the width how wide each column should be so we can say okay let the first column be 100 pixels wide 100 px 100 pixels wide so only we, we allocate 100 pixels for this guy tech page to stay in space and then um, we want every all the remaining space to just go to the nav link because the nav links will contain a couple of so many things will contain a couple of links so we anticipate that it needs more space than the, the logo is kind of fixed so 100 pixels should be okay for the logo so we want all the remaining available space to go to the uh, nav links so we use one fr one fraction of the remaining space so one fr just means take up all the remaining space you know available and let's save and control save and yay they are sharing space now so we see that this is 100 pixels and this is one of our like all available space left has gone to um, the nav links guy. So it doesn't matter how much I, if I expand it, expand it, expand it, expand it. You see that the hundred pixel here is fixed; it's not changing. But this guy keeps on getting longer. That's the nav links because it's taking one fr, one fraction of the remaining available space, the entire space. So, but this hundred pixels is fixed; it's not moving. But one fr is just filling up the entire space. I've noticed our background even is actually stretched because we use cover style. So because of the, uh, the, 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 the whole page is wider now, so the image itself is trying to stretch to, you know, to match. But if I shrink it, the image is shrinking because we use the cover style. That's background size cover. Okay. So let's let's shrink it back to a uh, small window. Okay. So the logo and the nav links are now sharing the same row. This is a row and the row horizontally we have row vertically we have column so there are two columns the first one is 100 pixel and the other one is 1 fr so let's see um our logo here is kind of uh, a bit to the left and uh, let's see if we can if we can align align now alignment is for vertical if you want to center something vertically use alignment if you want to center something horizontally you use uh, justify so we want this tech page to maybe should be somewhere in the middle of this box so we can use align items align a, a l i g n align dash items and um 
there are a couple of options but let's use center center i want to align it vertically so let's control save let's see yeah so it changes a bit so the tech page is now at the center of this box and this space here is because of our margin left that's margin left uh of uh, i think we use that was under the h3 yeah margin left 10 pixels so we can improve we can add more pieces if we want it to be uh, a lot closer to the center here but let's leave it as this because eventually we're going to make all of this invisible again so uh, you can just leave it for now okay so that is all about the nav the nav bar so this nav bar has two elements inside it it has the tech page as the, the h3 that holds the logo and it also has this nav links so inside the, na the nav links you uh we're gonna put we're gonna embed some links inside our uh our nav links so that's that about that okay so let's start working let's go back now so we want to start putting links inside our nav links so you have nav links now we want to start putting a couple of links inside our nav links so um we previously we've just been putting the links directly inside them i mean that links are a tags if you want to create a link you use a tag so we just put the a tags inside put the links directly inside the nav links and you know that's how i've been doing it before but what um, developers tend to do is to embed the links inside a list inside a list so we'll be doing that instead and later on i'll be explaining why well, the advantage in um, embedding the link inside a list so let's create a list first so inside the list we'll then put our link we we'll put our link or our links inside the list so um when you want to create a there are about i think there are three major um types of lists we've, we've created that before there's the unordered list there's the ordered list and there's the description list i guess yes description list so but for this particular application of course the unordered list is the best to use so the tag for unordered list is ul so open tag ul unordered list and uh unordered list close enter okay so after the unordered list when you create an unordered list inside the unordered list you're going to have multiple list items inside the unordered list so let's create our first and to use the list item you use the tag li so that's the first list item inside the unordered list li uh you can call it uh let me see mm, um let's say home i guess or sub content i don't know i'm thinking of what name to call okay yes we, we want to put a a link inside so let's just put it link first a tag a tag so basically inside the li tag we put a tag so inside the list tag we put a link inside so uh, the, the the text that we displayed i'm still thinking of which one we should use uh, let's use um sub content sub content you can put anything there you can use home you can use gallery uh, you can be gallery okay sorry we are working with this is gallery already so uh, we can put department or something just any text you want i'm thinking of using um sub content sub content sub content so let's call it sub content that's the first item there um so Mm, then let's go for let's create another list item li li tag another list item and inside that list item let's put a link inside the list item uh, of course if you, you can say if you don't if you don't put a link there and just put words there it will be clickable so for example if i use uh, maybe search if I put such as the text here, it'll just be random text. So let, let's, let's just save and see what's actually going on. Control S, save. Uh -huh. So we see here that uh, we have sub content and uh, such appears here, although it's kind of it's hard to see because of the image. Uh, it's hard to see what it is. But something here called search. Let me highlight it. Uh, so search is here, and then sub content is here. So now if uh, sub content is not even clicking. I'm trying to click it. It's supposed to be a link. It's not even clicking. There's no, it's not a hyperlink, and that is because our hit tag, we didn't put, we didn't put define the uh, hyperlink reference href. So whenever you have a hit tag, you define the uh, the hyperlink reference where you want it to go. The href. So, so href, 
hyperlink reference so the hyperlink reference for the a tag uh, where do we want it to go so if I click on sub if I click on sub um, this sub content uh, link where do I want it to go so but for now because we've never defined where we want it to go let's just put around a dummy link and we use create dummy link by using hash hashtag so I say we hash one hashtag one so it, it won't take us anywhere so it's just kind of like a dummy link so hash hashtag one so hashtag one and um, save so we see that automatically this is now a link sub content is a link I can click on it so it's clicky but it's not, it's not taking us anywhere because hash one is just a dummy the dummy link so but our search is not it's, it's not a link it's not clickable because it's just word it's just a list item so this list item like we are, we are instead of having just a normal list item you are going to make it a uh, you make it um, a link so a tag is for link angle bracket a close angle bracket now you have a link so let's move our search move it inside the a tag the uh, a tag and give it hyperlink reference attribute equal to uh, let's say h2 and that dummy uh, link h2 and save so we have two clickable uh, links subcontent is clickable and search is clickable well they don't take us anywhere because we just put dummy links there h1 and h2 they are both dummy links so we've created two links which is not bad and um, uh, should we create one more link? Yeah, let's create one more link. So uh, another li list item. Sorry, close it. Then a tag a. Close the a tag. Uh -huh. uh, let's call this. Uh, should we say contact us? Contact. Contact us. Okay. So on the so let's give it href of course as usual href hyperlink reference hash 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 where is hash hash three not domain link uh -huh. so we have contact us uh, contact us search uh, sub content so you have three although it might not be really visible here but there are three links here because of the color it might not appear that way so there are three links here so um, they are all under this on ordered lists so we cannot do some couple of styling now because later on we are still going to um, have some other on other lists so we must be able to differentiate this on other lists from other on other lists so let's give it a class name class um, let's call it uh, what, what can we call it? let's call it main menu main menu main capital M E N E and one thing of course one mistake i noticed with uh, some of my students is that whatever name they give the name their class here you know when they get to the style they still use the same name but they kind of change sometimes instead of this capital b sometimes they use small b and whereas in the html file the class name they use capital b so it must be exactly the same where you have capital letter it must be capital letter when you have small letter it must be small letter so uh, html and css they have no way of knowing of intuitively deciding that you meant to use capital letter instead of small letter so you have to explicitly put exactly the same thing you have you know in in, uh, in the html as the class name and the css when you are doing your um, selection so main menu the first m is small cap the second m is capital so of course you can write it uh, any other way you like but of course it has to match whichever way you write it it has to match both in the uh, html file and in the uh, css file so we want to after our nav links, nav bar, nav links. Okay, so uh, we want to style our main menu. Now, our main menu is a class. So we use dot notation, and so we can now start styling our main menu. So we are what is it, what exactly is our main menu? Our main menu is inside. Is a list. Is a on other list element inside the nav links nav links is this green box here so we see that these three these three um list items subcontent the three of them are inside this green box now in it's my side my look straight to you because i said it's inside but it's not technically it's only this subcontent that is that happens to be inside it's kind of the others are overflowing out from it 
so it, it doesn't look as if it's inside it, but it's inside it. And that is because this list elements, of course, just like we had before, each of these list elements, they are box elements, so they are, they are arranged uh, vertically. They don't want to share the same horizontal space. But if you can put sub content, search and contact or these three, if you can make them horizontal, put them, you know, on the same line, they will all fit inside this green box, which is where they belong to in the first place. So let's um, edit our or style our main menu, which is just this another list. This list, the another list that contains these three list elements. Let's style our main menu inside our CSS. So let's come back here, Control S, save. Let's go. So main menu. Now, uh, earlier on when we were in the nav bar, this nav bar, and we wanted to put this text page, this red box, and this green box, we wanted to put them side by side. Then, when we wanted to put them side by side, we used display grid, and we specified two columns, and we gave those two columns the respective the dimensions. That was how we made it side by side. That is one way of doing it. There's still another way. Now, in this case, we have three items, one, two, three, and we want to make these three items side by side. They are all block elements, which means that they all want to occupy their own horizontal space. So, but we can place these three of them side by side each other, just the way we did for this red box and this green box. So to do that, we can use grid again, just like we, we can, if you use the, in this main menu, if you use display grid, instead of two columns, we specify three columns and give them their respective column width. It would work. That is one way of doing it. But I want to show another way we can do it, and that is to use what is called flex. So flex is a counterpart, it's an alternative to grid, kind of. So there are some, applic there are some applications where grid is better, and there are some applications where flex is better to use. But in many applications, what you can do with grid, you can do with flex, kind of. So, developers kind of, you know, uh, switch between the two of them. Some prefer grid, some prefer flex. But it's, it's good to know both. So, in some cases, you can just combine. So, let's let's use flex for the. Or we can use grid to do this, to make it side by side, just the way we do for them. We just define the display grid, and then we will do this again. But instead of two, um, two column width, we use three. We, we put another width here again. Of course, we use pixels, maybe 500 pixels, 500 pixels, something like that. So, okay, so let's like, like, like use uh, f the second method, that is display flex. So, here we go, display column. So, we before we use display grid, but instead of display grid, let's use display flex. So, display flex and that. So, if I use display flex and I control save, automatically you see that the three of them are already side by side. So, in many ways, uh, this flex is technically kind of easier to use than the grid. Remember that when we first, when we did display grid, it still did not work kind of. We had to specify the width of the each um, column before you know, we were able to get our elements side by side each other. But in this case, immediately you define the box as, in this case the box is the UL, this main menu, as flex. Instantly it automatically puts the three of them side by side. But with the problem you didn't have is that this kind of like an overlapping so they are overlapping kind of overlapping of elements so you may have to space them out a bit and things like that so display flex now after display flex now before we even before we do that uh it probably might be okay if we uh if we remove the this, this, this dot this black dot you know because okay let me remove the display flex again control four slash comment it out let's go back here now you see that because this is another list, it, it gives bullet points for each uh, um, list element. So, of course, we don't want. I don't think we. It's not. It's, it doesn't look cool. It, it doesn't look presentable to still have this. Um, at least for this particular uh, application, for this particular usage, uh, it doesn't look good to have the bullet points to display. So we can remove the bullet points if we want, and of course we want to do that. So if we go back to our HTML file here um, we have li li is the list element li so li is under main menu so there are so many ways you can do this what we want to style are all the li's the li is the list element they're the ones that are having this uh, bullet point so if we style this li in a unique way we can remove this bullet points so the li is under the main menu right so i can just come here and say um, you know what apart from having normal main menu styling i can just come under here and still do dot main menu space that is under main menu i want to select an element under main menu that is li 
So I want to select all the allies I can find under main menu. And I go to brackets. And uh, so what I want to do is a list style. What style of list do I want to? List style. Now you see there, there's a list style called disk. This disk list style. There are so many other list styles. So let's just go list style. None. I don't want any. I don't want bullet point. I don't want any kind of bullet point. Whether um, square bullet point or box or square uh, or circular or oval. What's no bullet point? Safe. So that the bullet points have disappeared because under main menu uh, class we selected all the allies, all the list elements, all the ally elements, and we gave them a list style of none. No list style. Don't style it for me. I just want it. You know, I don't want any bullet points. Just get rid of the bullet points. So the bullet points are gone. So that is good. So let's go back here and enable our display flex again now it's not it's not side by side each other but just that yeah there's almost no space there's no space uh, between them there's no space between them so uh, we can we can kind of work around that we can work around that you know in many ways there are so many options there's so many ways we can can do that I'm still thinking of which will be best uh, So um, we want to hard space. We want to space our uh, links. All the hard space. I mean, there are so many ways you can do. I'm still thinking of the best. We can hard space to the list item itself. Let's let's see if that will work first. If I say uh, margin, margin left or right, whichever one. And put uh, five pixels, and save. You know, instead, it's it's a spa it's space now. We have space between you know, so we can add space to the list item itself, or we can add space to the uh, a tags itself. We can add space. So let's just add space to the list item itself, and uh, let's just do it since we are already working with the list item anyway. So save. I think we are we are getting somewhere now. So, the a tags now this links themselves they are a tags. So, we, uh, I don't know if you can see this clearly. You know the color of the, the sub this is sub content. The sub content base color is kind of like bluish, and and our background is um, teal in color. Although we will still remove this this teal color, we still remove it just to for us to recognize our uh, div box here. So. I would like to just change this color. I'll change. I like to change the color of the a of the link. These links and these links are a tags. They are a tags, and and they are not just any a tags. They are a tags under the main menu. So if I style a tag, if I come here and I say, um, where am I here? Okay, if I come here and I say, uh, a a tag. If I style the a tag here, it will style every single a tag that appears on this page. So that means even if I create another a tag that is not in the nav box, that is maybe somewhere here, another a tag here, it's going to style it. So and uh, probably might not really want that. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. So I think it's just best to style it inside the style it inside uh, the main menu. So I'll come here and I won't style all, you know, all a tags. Be just before the a tag, I put dots main menu. So this is saying that under main menu, style all a tags under the main menu. So if there's any a tag that's not under the main menu, it won't style it. So this is safer kind of. So such so, so that when I create other a tags later on, I don't have to worry about um, you know, this original styling I have done affecting it. I can style them differently. Okay. So the first thing is first. Let's just let's change the color. Color of uh, Let's use um, white. We, we've used white smoke for the logo. Let's use white, plain white this time around. Control save. Uh -huh. Now it's white. Now we can see it clearly. You know, it's white now, so that's better. So we can add we can add margin here. We can say uh, margin, uh, margin right. We can say margin right, margin right. You can add margin right. Uh, maybe another five pixels. Margin right five pixels, and uh, uh, you know what? Let's add another background, you know, 
under background um, uh, background color. Yeah. And sometimes it's, I, I just like to give background color to elements. I will still remove it. It's, it's, it's be something contrasting to the to the green, even something like yellow, because that this is a terrible color choice. It's ugly. Uh, but so I just want to see. It helps to really see, you know, the the, the boundary, the boundary of the uh, element. So, but okay, I think uh, yellow is a wrong choice because it's too close to white. Let me look for another color that is not that close to white. Uh, okay, let's just use tomato again. Okay. So we can now see the boundaries of our a tag. So that when we are doing some adjustments, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, we we kind of see where we are going. Okay. Next, we can remove text decoder. Now, I don't. It's not really too uh, personal. I don't really like having uh, underline. This on this underline appear with uh, my link every single time. So. I can use it property called or attribute called text text decoration. So I don't want any decoration. Like don't decorate, don't underline, don't do anything. Just none. I don't want any underlining and just you know, text on text decoration. So the underline is gone because no decoration. We don't want it. We don't. The underline is a kind of decoration kind of to the text. So and that we can make our we can make the font size larger, font or smaller. I don't know font size. If I say font size is 14 pixel and I save it. I think it became smaller a bit. I think so. Okay. Now let's define the height. If we want our uh, this box is kind of small. I, I want it to be. I want the the link to be taller, so to speak. So have a greater height. Height of thirty no, pixel. Now the height will not affect the font size. But let's see. Thirty pixel height. 30 pixel now is is not showing up here why let's try if it's at the five pixels still show. okay okay that is because uh, we've we've converted it to this the flex flex is kind of overriding you know the height but don't worry about that we'll come back to that later let's leave that for now okay. hmm. so let's remove So usually, um, like I said earlier, there, there are many um, there are many uh, elements that automatically had margin top when you create them. So a good example is that is the UL. That I'm just main menu. This actually a, there is a margin at the top of, of this of this little guy. So for example, if I give it a banda background color, like I said, just like adding background color, color to elements, so you kind of see what is going on. Sometimes it does some some undesirable things. But let's use yellow and save so we see here that we expect we expected it to flush with the top here so but the list element the ul element the main menu is kind of narrow ish so they say top is, is, is margin at the top here so if i come here and i say margin margin is zero pixels and i save uh -huh. now you see that it flushes right to the top there was a margin at the top before so Margin zero. I want all my now. Whenever you say margin zero, it gives zero to both the margin top, zero margin left, margin right. So assign zero to all the all margin all around the your uh, box elements. So that is that is okay for that. And the UL element, I hope it, I don't think it is margin top for this. I don't think so. Uh, let's just see margin zero pixels and save no change so I guess it, it's okay okay so that's that about that so now the the, the uh, main menu oh, okay, where that the, okay yeah yellow okay so the we want to make the ul kind of you know the heights to match what we have here so we can either we can do it from here we can give the main remember the main menu is the ul the ul tag the another list tag so we can give it the height from here and say height of 35 pixels, 35 pixels, save. So it becomes as tall as you know the nav bar 
on the entity or you can decide not to give the height to the main the ul itself but the li tags the li tags themselves you can make the li tags themselves have a height of 35 for example if i let me comment this out and see if for it goes back to the you know the what it was before and let me recom uh, uncomment it and see if so it works both ways so now the li the list elements themselves are as tall as 35 pixels or they have height of 35 pixels each so now we've done that we can now uh, go to go back to our a tag so the a tag we have we define the height of 35 pixels and you know it seems like nothing happened to like it did not you know it didn't stretch down you know which is okay now but one major issue we we have now let me uncomment this since it's not doing anything for us so uh, let just let me of course comment it for now one issue we have is that now this our links are flushed to the top of the ul of what are the li tags that they are in they are flushed to the top so you want to kind of place it somewhere in the middle because one crude way we can do it crude method is to just use a um, margin top of course uh, th that is not advisable margin top and be adding manually uh, let's add three pixels three pixels and save uh, did it change i don't know let's use uh 10 pixels save oh, it said you know it didn't work hmm. I said maybe if we had it to maybe if we had it to the li li tags themselves x li tags uh, okay uh -huh. so now of course it shifted but since the li tags have they have their own specific height so the whole thing shifted down so uh, i think let's just let's let's not use that method the crude method might not really work here mm. so let's do something else and we can define now each because we want to move this content this um a tag within itself we can define it as a flex box such that one, one cool thing about flex box is that if you have a box and um, you want to move things inside it in dynamic ways it's cool to use a flex for example this main menu we used this main menu here this nav link this yellow box you see here we use display flex to move the contents that was supposed to be vertical to horizontal like sub content and search and content they are supposed to be vertically aligned now they are horizontally aligned so um, let's do the same thing for the links themselves. So let's make a tag of display flex D I S P L display flex type flex flex and save. So of course it, it looks as if nothing happened. But now if I uncomment this guy, uncomment this and I save. Now you see that you know the the um, a tag now has as um, height. So when you use something like the display flex, it kind of gives you control to you know. Uh, wiggle your limit a bit so you're giving the uh, the tags themselves the a tags themselves height of um 35 pixels so now we can now say okay you know what i want this guy to move downwards here. i want vertical i want to vertically align remember that when we use display flex here was it here um what was it here okay it was under the grid guy we use align items center so whenever you use display grid or you use display flex you can use align items to center vertically but if you don't use display grid or display flex align item center will not work so let's align items to the center for our a tag the link align items remember align items is for vertical alignment and justify is for horizontal so align items center and save so it's now centered which is not bad it's, it's okay so uh let's see if we can add more space between these guys or we just leave them like this i don't know we can leave it like this or we let's let's add more space within the uh within the a tag itself so we can add padding you know now we've already had a margin right before which is okay now if i had it uh under align elements we are doing here okay let me do here if i had it margin left for example margin left uh, of six pixels six pixels and i see control save now we see here that there's more space it had more space to the left but the tomato box has the box the the, the 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 boundary the box that defines the uh text the link element itself it's still kind of you know uh, there's no space like 
the contact us now is touching the edges of the box to the left and to the right and we would like to maybe put some space there so using margin left doesn't work for that because it put the space outside the box so if you want the space to be inside the box use padding instead padding instead of um instead of margin so that is one major difference between the padding and the, and the margin so padding left let's use six pixels for padding left six pixels for padding left save and now you see that there is now space between this sub content and the edge there is space now so our text the links the text inside the links you can now breathe better now because of course they have more space to breathe in there to the left at least to the left let's make it 10 pixels and see if you know now we have more space okay which is okay so but of course to the right it's still touching the very edge of the respective links so let's go padding right padding right 10 pixels the same space to the right and save aha so now we have we have space to the left and to the right which is okay okay so i think we are close so padding to the left padding to the right and um so automatically uh now what if i let, let me let's, let's try something what if i use 20 here so you see if i if i use 20 here you see that there is more space to the right than to the left which is okay but let me see if i check if i add something here. something called justify i don't know if justify will work here justify content justify content center let's see if that will work uh, it didn't do anything okay let's just take this guy back to 10 pixels so we are the center now let's justify content what it does is it aligns horizontally it puts your but this is already aligns horizontally so it's like redundancy kind of well you just leave it there for the sake of it but it aligns your sub content or the text horizontally align items does the vertical alignment it brings it from the top to the center justify content takes it from maybe the left to the center or the right to the center that so justify is horizontal alignment and align items is vertical alignment so that's all about that so so we are making progress uh okay now the next thing we'd like to do is uh it be I'll, I'll prefer if we move our links all of these guys right to the very end move them to the end here so to do that of course you can just be hiding margin 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 till it gets to here but that is a good way to do things because if you resize the page the page becomes larger you know your margin gets all uh it gets out of out of place so it's not so advisable to use that when you want to align things to the left to the right or to the center or rather justify in this case because you are doing horizontal uh, movements or horizontal alignments so we want to justify uh, links to the right so to do to do that we are able to do the justifying we we'll do it in the main menu because the main menu is this guy is the ul that is this oh this yellow box so and our main menu has a type called display flex the display type is flex so because it's display flex, there are a couple of things you could do with it. And like, remember I said that when we use display flex, we can do justify contents to center. It's going to work. And we can do online item center. It's going to work because it's display flex. If you had used display grid, it will still also work. So in our main menu, this under display flex, um, we can do justify content. Justify content. Of course, we'll be using ju center for our justify content so far. So, but we can use flex end so flex end to, to move it to the very end so let's use flex end for our justify content control save now we've moved our links to the very bottom so even if i expand this no matter how far i expand it it remains at the you know extreme right at the end of the flex so which is okay so let's move it back to the place it always remains at the end regardless of you know so that's that about that and um yeah i think we are we are pretty okay. I think we are okay with where we've gotten to now. So now we can, we can start removing some uh, ugly boxes. Let's remove this yellow first. You know, the yellow is out of place. So yellow is gone. So this, the green, I think we had the green for, the green was the tear rather, was the nav links. So this, I think, should we just remove the nav? Let's remove that green first. Let's see. Okay, now that I remove the nav, everything now looks red, red, red. So the red was supposed to be for the nav bar. So the nav bar, of course, it's supposed to have a visible color, uh, so let's remove the red for it. Let's give the nav bar the color that we want to actually give it in the first place. So, a nav bar, 
instead of tomato yeah let's give it a better color rgb a remember a is opacity like it how transparent do you want it to be so if you say 50 comma 50 uh comma 50 uh comma 0 0.705 of course, I, I can change this here actually. You can just, for example, instead of 50, if I change it to somewhere around here, 100, uh, I can change the opacity. You see, the value has changed. It was, it's no longer 50, 50, 50, as it is. And I can change the opacity. That's it, how transparent it is. If it's 1, it is no tra it's not transparent at all. That's opacity 1. If I remove it now, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it just removes the option completely if it's 1. This is 0 0.9 something. So it's almost completely. Uh, it's op opaque at least you can't see through it and if it is zero or close to zero it is completely transparent at least you can see through the uh, object or through the color so let's of course go somewhere zero point something not too not too transparent and not too opaque opaque is one transparent is zero so somewhere in between like zero point seven something so let's let, let, let me put a fixed value let me use 50 here 50 here 50 here and maybe use 0 0.70700 and control save uh -huh. so now we see here that you know the color is black this 50 50 50 is grayish kind of like gray so but this 0 0.7 made it a bit transparent so we can see the part of uh, the robot's head through the navbar so our navbar is looking better now so of course we still have these ugly red colors here that we will remove so maybe just remove the ugly red colors. I don't know. So it's under the mm, the um, nav, no, not the nav, the uh, link itself. So the, we put the background color for a link. Let's remove the, let's remove that tomato, and then so that's gone. Uh -huh. So it's better now. You know, so it's better now. So but unfortunately, if you over, if we over over the uh, the a link, you know. Uh, there is no sign that we are overing on it so this is visually better to kind of put you know a some kind of let it be a change in the way the, the link appears whenever you hover on it so you know okay i'm moving over this something like that so we can do something about that we can put a, a subclass or like a hover effect for our, our list so um now we can do it for the main menu in this li or we can do it for all li so every link you over on we can make it to appear one way to have some kind of effect so then let's do it for all allies so every li if you put full column i want the that a couple of effects the after effects backdrop effect before effects on that effect so we won't focus too much on all of this so let us use over over effect so if we over our mouse on every li we can do it for just the Li that happens to be under the main main menu, we can do that, but we want it to be on all allies, you know. Just and then, so whatever it is we define here will happen whenever we hover on every single ally, or we can make it on only main menu. So, to do that, of course, we just put dot main menu. So, this will only work on the allies that are associated with the main menu, but we want to be for every single ally. So, let's delete this. So, ally for all allies, if you hover on them, we want to change something about them. What do you want to change? Uh, let's change background color. So you want the background color to change. The background color, we want it to be, let's go back to our usual RGBA-ish. And let's use um, 2.5, okay, okay let, let me select this manually. Oh, this is the previous color, so uh, let me select it manually. If I drag, 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 drag to the top here, white, I want to be pure white. 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, that's white. And I want the transparency to be uh, pretty low, maybe 0 0.3 something, 3.301. Control save. Okay, it seems like nothing happened. But if, we, if I over my mouse on this li, the li that contains the sub content link, you see that it's white, white ish. If I come here, white ish, white, 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 white. Okay, so, uh, so. Now, for those of you that are um, doing this exercise on your Android devices, you know, the over may not really work, kind of, because you don't have this. You don't have a mouse, 
on the Android device, so they are actually clicking. So if you just if you try to click on it, it might not do anything because it's kind of tricky to simulate the hovering effect with your fingers when you are on a touch screen device like an Android device. You know. So in your case, if you're using Android, you uh, maybe you should, you'll probably have to use Active instead of you know Hover Active. No Active IVE Save. So if you use active instead, if I over, nothing is happening. But if I click, that's active. Now I've clicked on it. Click, 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 click. So in your case, since you are working with a um, uh, touch screen device, if the over doesn't work for you, like if you try to touch it and the color doesn't change, you can try active. You know, but let's, let's go back to over. over. Over just works best for all we need to do. So over, over, and it's still working. Okay. So that's that about that. So our nav bar is looking okay. It's looking good. It's looking better. And um, our lav links are okay too. You can click on them, and it's okay. Okay. So let's let's now start working with our um, our menu. You know, in the example I show uh, in the review. The peg, the web page I reviewed or I showed at the start of this video lecture, is that when I hover on this, I want a, a sub menu to pop up under this. So, for that reason, um, we, have, we have to define a sub menu under um, any one of these. So let's put our sub menu under sub content. Of course, we want it to be to pop down under it. So let's go out to our gallery. So sub content is this guy. Sub content is this li guy. So under this li, right after this a tag. This whole list item, it's li tag, is our um, is our sub content. So under the sub content, we want to put at the end of this li, like this li and this li tag. Uh -huh. We press enter. Uh, inside this li tag, this first li tag, I want to put another content. There, another content. I'm uh, sorry, not content. Another menu, a small menu. So that menu, of course, is going to this original menu here. This is what you have here. It's a UL. It's a UL uh, element. So we're going to put another UL element here. So UL, angle brackets UL. Close the angle brackets. Yes. Now inside this UL, you are going to have some other list too inside that same UL. So now before we start, before they start getting um, a bit more complex, let's under this LI, let's put, let's give it something. Let's give it a unique class name. Because now that it has, it has a unique, it, it looks different now to the other allies because it has something inside it. So let's give it a name by which you can reference it. Let's give it a class name. Class name, let's call it um, drop down menu. Drop, drop, uh, drop down, or drop down one. So this ally now is going to be, we want to want it to, to have a drop down menu on that. So let's call it drop down one because we're still going to have another drop down. So this one will drop down one, the other one will drop down two. So drop down one. So under this ally, we call this ally, we give it a class name of drop down one. So under this ally now, we put a, a UL under UL. So this UL will serve as a different menu on its own. Remember that the UL is made up of multiple allies. So the first ally you're going to put under this UL is. Um, Let's just let's, let's give it one uh, li, and under that li, of course, you put another a tag there, a tag, and uh, we can call it a couple of things. We can call it home. You can say, okay, let's go back home. That's home. You can say home. Uh, you can say home, and of course, every a tag should have href. So, should have href, hyperlink reference equal to. For now, let's use a dummy link. Uh, we use ash one two three let's use ash four save uh, now you see that home appears here you see home appears here so now we have home home appears here uh, that is the first hyperlink so under that under it we want to put another Link another li tag in that sub menu. Uh, li a tag. Uh, what should we call the next one? Um, should we say departments? Departments. 
department and let's give it let me shift it a bit to the right let's give it href a public reference a href a public reference of a uh, dummy link 5 h5 and save so here we have sub home and um, home and home department home sub content that is okay home so under content sub content we have home department and uh, let's see can we add one more let me see if we can add one more can we add one more yes we can uh, we already have contact us uh, hmm, I'm still thinking of what I can put there a a tag mm, if you searched already we use contact us home department and store and our store or something so I panic reference href let's give it a okay no i don't mind that well href let's give it dummy link ash six as a dummy link and save so we have home department store the sub uh, menu under sub content which is okay okay so this sub menu we, we want to be able to style it remember that these three guys home department and store they are all under they are this list li tag and they are under this ul tag so we want to be able to style this ul tag uniquely so let's give it its, its own name class a class name of a um, sub menu is a sub menu let's call it sub uh, menu sub menu one and save so sub menu one so you have drop down one drop down one is this list item here we call it drop down one the class name of drop down one and then the do under it we have a menu and we call this menu this ul tag as a menu under it as sub menu one so let's see if we can style um, sub menu one and we'll move from there so sub menu one okay we sh let's see what should we do i think uh, as of course as usual the very first thing of course i tend to do is to of course give background color to everything <laughs> as usual okay let's see where can i put you can put it anywhere actually uh should we put it after oh, this, okay this this h3 spanner it's our i guess it's our logo right let's move it upward it's two let's move it um right after our nav top okay nav bar uh, in css it doesn't matter where you put the element it would still want to save it will still have the same effect so you know nav bar is this whole bar then the the h3 and the span was the logo and after that we had we started, ha started having our nav links that's these guys uh, and then the main menu uh so within the the nav links itself then um the uh, li under in the main menu uh then over on li then main menu uh, so we are basically done with the, the main menu is these guys and we style them the li we style the li's in the main menu then we style the a tags under the main menu that's this all the links here we style all of them so we are not going to a sub menu now that's this home guy this home you know this, this guy so, so let's let's style the sub menu one so the class one name is sub menu one let me just copy that name so i don't make a mistake while typing we come here and dot since the class dot notation sub menu one so let's style my sub menu one uh the very let me just give it background color as usual uh, of course background color of uh, RGBA I want it to be transparent so uh, let's do 50 um, okay we have let's use this 50 50 0 0.70 or uh, let me take on the opacity I can reduce the opacity and make it 0 0.63 and save okay that didn't work out and save okay why is it not working sub menu 1 sub menu one is, is the ul here hmm. oh, is it? Oh, okay okay i see it 
um, I hero put the extra close brackets when they should not be. So let me close the extra close uh, bracket and close and save. So you see here that you know it's, it's looking cool. It's looking better now. So you see here that uh, s home uh, department store and you know it looks it looks better now so now there is this space to our left it's kind of undesirable kind of you know uh, why, why why do we have this this space so it's it's most likely padding because it's the space within the ul so if i come here and i say padding padding is zero pixels and i save uh -huh, and that padding is gone so now we just you know it's, it's okay now it's okay it's better you know. so um let me see can i adjust the width i can make it wider this this width is actually not bad i, I think i like it like this or let me or if i if i change the width let's see if we to do anything if i use width of 80 pixels i hope that is not too narrow save okay it's too narrow <laughs> uh, i can use width of 150 pixels save that is probably too wide i don't know uh, or let me just remove the width for now if i don't use the width it just use it uses the width that it feels is close enough to the contents of you know of uh, the ul let's maybe we specify with data uh, let's just leave it like this for now save okay so that's all there is about the sub menu sub menu one on our contents we have this sub menu one so and that is okay it's not bad okay so uh that is one sub menu but of course in the introduction I kind of you know we had the sub menu come down and then other departments we have another menu come up under departments so it's uh it's probably better for let's 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 do let's add a sub menu a sub menu to the sub menu so we already have one sub menu so inside this sub menu I'm gonna put another sub menu you know <laughs> so but before we had more uh, add another sub menu to this sub menu. Uh, I think it would be better if we had an, an horizontal line that runs through this. You can put an horizontal line, or we can just leave it there. Yeah, okay, well let's let's see if we can have an horizontal line. So if we come to our HTML tag here, after this first li tag, if I come here and I put um, open angle brackets, hr uh, forward slash close save. So we have an horizontal line, you know, right in between. Or we can just leave it without horizontal line. I don't know. Just to simplify things, let me move the horizontal line, so we don't really have to worry much about that for now. Okay, let's remove the horizontal line, and we have just we have this as it is. So um, under this first sub content, we have this sub menu. So I want to put a sub menu under department. So this is department. So after this li right within this li after the open li tag before the closing li tag enter let's put some space in there so i'm going to put another ul again u l close bracket and on that inside this ul i have a couple of li tags so uh hope it's not getting too confusing li tag and um, let's put a tag inside it. A tag, and we call this maybe department one. Department one, and uh, another li tag with a tag inside it. Department two. And uh, just copy. Let's just copy and paste. Copy and paste. Parameter three. So let's give this href. Hyperlink reference equal to uh, domain link as six. Here hyperlink reference equal to domain link as seven. Hyperlink reference go to domain link hash eight save okay that's this is already <laughs> already getting all modeled up already okay 
so it's hard to see what is what is going on but let's it's okay like that it's okay we will adjust things okay so by my one by my two and by my three and okay now because this guy this ally is different from this ally this ally is on its own this ally has something inside it so we need to give it its own class so that we can style it uniquely if we want to so we call this ally um the drop down this first ally we call it drop down we gave it the class drop down one so this second ally we give it another, a class name of um a class name of drop down not one but drop down two so that we can style it uniquely and this ul the original ul here are this class of sub menu one so uh this ul let's give it its own class name of sub menu two and save so that way we can edit we can style sub menu two and sub menu one separately let's go to style two dot css and you know do some editing with that here so if we uh write from your original our original uh sub menu one now sub menu one is all over the place it, because sub menu two has kind of collapsed into sub menu one so we might will probably like not to have that happen and so to prevent that let's try let's look at our sub menu two sub menu two dot sub menu two let's first of all give our sub menu two a different background color first of all background color let's just use the red let's use red aha uh -huh. so we see here that sub menu two kind of you know uh it's, it's super impulsive it fits enters into sub menu one and the very first thing we probably like to do in sub menu two is to remove the padding for sub menu two just what we did this is this padding this is space to the left so let's remove the padding for sub menu two padding is zero pixels save uh, so now it's narrower now which is okay so that is one thing we can do but that is not all we can now it is actually superimposed right within sub menu one and we don't want that to happen so that means the posi its position should be a bit far we want to move its position away from where these guys so we use something called we uh, an attribute called position so position there are a lot of options we can use but for this case let's use absolute so absolute position that means it's going to have its own unique position we can you can shift the position you can shift where it is in a way it's kind of like margin right margin left margin top button it's kind of like it but better safe so it's it's not standing on its own so we can shift it to the left to the top or to the so let's let's shift its position to the left so if i say left and i say um 90 pixels 90 pixels to the left and i save so it's giving me 90 pixels to the left of its original position to the left now this 90 pixels to this left so if i shift this to maybe um 10 pixels to the left so it's saying 10 pixels to this overall left and i want it to be this left not this left so that to mean let me first take about 90 once again that would mean that the original main menu i have to define it as absolute so that its reference point will start from here not the whole the left of the entire page so in my original sub menu if i define the position as um absolute and i save you see that our sub menu is now 90 pixel to this left not this left line here so for example if i go here and i say 10 pixels uh-huh so it's 10 pixel to this left not this left 
So absolute for sub menu one, absolute position for sub menu two. So let's take it back to uh, let's say 100 pixels now. 100 pixels is still uh, is still within. Uh, let's still move to the to the uh, uh, give an offset left offset. 140 pixels safe. Okay, that is too far to the right. 120 pixels, not too bad. 110 pixels, uh, too much. 115 pixels. Okay, it's better. So 115 pixels get us, you know, to this point, which is not too bad. Not too bad. So, but let's see. I kind of like if it can go up also a bit. If I can lift this up a bit, such that you know, instead of um, just having it you're just having it to the left alone you know to the left alone it's kind of fine so that if i over on this this menu is just beside it so let's look at what instead of left we can also shift to bottom so the bottom uh let's start from zero pixels to the bottom zero pixels bottom save uh now with zero pixel bottom what that what that does is that it kind of the remember that this is the reference this guy so the bottom of this guy is here the bottom is here so it's kind of it flushes its own bottom and two bottom kind of you know uh, it's, it flushes like the same straight line so let's see what we can do about that i don't know if you give it 40 pixels to the bottom so it moves it away like 40 pixels to the bottom raises it higher than uh, it should be so what i mean let's take it back to zero uh, so if you use negative number this time, maybe minus uh, minus 20 pixels to the bottom. Now it's now pushing downwards. So minus 40 pixels. Uh, minus uh, 35. 38 pixels. Minus 35 pixels okay so you see that this department one two three is right under you know the department uh on department right on the department you know sub sub menu which is okay so we can um, change the color now the color is kind of ugly with red let's go back to let's use the same color for sub menu one for sub menu two the same background color and paste and save so you know we kind of have something like that and you know and that is okay now we can make sub menu tw uh, two longer rather wider the width is too narrow so if i make the width because this department one there's no space for the one so if we can make it wider it will, f it will have space to fit in the one side by side with the department so width of uh, 120 pixels I hope that will not be too wide. Hmm. Okay, it seems like 120 pixel is not enough. Let's try 125 pixels. And okay, yeah. So 125 pixels is it's okay. So we have it like this, and yeah, I think it's okay as this. So. We have we've been able to kind of um, create a sub menu under this drop down one and under drop down two departments another sub menu and that's okay. But now you might be wondering, you know, this is this is not uh, good enough because our sub menus are fixed. It's, it's just there, it's just always there. So what good is this if it's just always there? So for us to get it to pop up whenever we wanted to. We have to move into animations, so we have to start animating things a little bit to get it to pop up whenever we want it to, and that would bring us to the um, subtopic of animations.